In this tutorial, we'll discuss the guide snap icon. This makes the cursor snap to guides, which are auxiliary lines that extend infinitely long. When the guide snap icon is clicked down, then guide snapping is on, which is the default. When the guide snap icon is clicked up, then guide snapping is off. Before we can use guide snap to snap to guidelines, we need to examine how to create guides first. We shall examine three ways that guides are generated. The first type of guide is an automatic guide that is created during dynamic input such as drawing, transforming, extruding, etc. Be sure that guide snap is on and select the vector line tool. Start clicking in the modeling window to create a vector line. Observe that a guide is automatically created at the current click point. Move the cursor along the guidelines and observe that the cursor snaps to the guide. The temporary guides are dashed lines that are color coded as follows. Parallel to X is red, parallel to Y is green, parallel to Z is blue, and tangent or perpendicular is magenta. Hit the command key on Macintosh or the control and alt keys on Windows to toggle the perpendicular direction. This switches the cursor to snap to the blue perpendicular guide axis. Double click to end the line and the guide is automatically deleted after the execution of the selected tool is complete. Turn guide snap off and create another vector line. Observe that no guides are generated when you click points. Note that you can toggle the guide snap icon on or off at any time while drawing. Another automatic snapping feature is the ability to find the potential snap that is perpendicular back to your first point while drawing a shape. A gray line is displayed to show this potential snap if the cursor is along any guideline and is also near a possible perpendicular condition. To demonstrate this, turn guide snap on and select the vector line tool. Then click three points to create a rectangular shape by snapping to the green and red automatic guides. Move the mouse along the automatic guide until you come close to perpendicular to the first point. Observe that a gray guideline will signify the potential click point that will be perpendicular back to the first point. Note that the perpendicular direction doesn't have to be aligned in any one direction. Simply create a vector line at any angle. While drawing, move the cursor along the green guide axis and a potential perpendicular condition is found. Move the cursor along the magenta guide and another potential perpendicular condition is found. The second type of guide is a temporary guide that can be generated by press command key and spacebar anytime object snaps are active. To create a temporary guide, turn guide snap on, then select any type of tool that enables object snaps such as the pick tool, a drawing tool, or a transformation tool. Place the cursor over a point or segment on the object. Then press the command key and spacebar and a series of guidelines will be generated through the snap point. At most, three such sets of temporary guidelines can be active. If a fourth set is created, the oldest set of guidelines is removed first. Observe that when we create a temporary guide on the fourth box, the guide on the first box is removed. Temporary guides remain associated with the object where the snap occurred. If the object is in any form edited, the temporary guides for that object are removed. Observe that when we move an object, any temporary guides associated with that object are deleted. Another way to delete a temporary guide is to delete all visible guides with a single key shortcut. Use the command key, the shift and space keys and all temporary guides are deleted. An example to demonstrate the use of temporary guides would be to create a box that is aligned with the edges of other objects. We will use temporary guides to find the intersection of where the edges of two different objects meet. We begin by using the Rectangle tool to create two boxes. With the Rectangle tool still selected, move the cursor over the corner point of the first box and hit the command key and space bar, a temporary guide is created at the corner point location. Move the cursor over the corner point of the second box and hit the command key and space bar, another temporary guide is created at that corner point location. With the Rectangle tool still active and guide snap on, Move the cursor to the intersection of the two guides and the cursor will snap to the intersection of the guides. Click to begin drawing the third box. Note that if snapping, the guideline is drawn solid. Complete the box and observe that we are aligned with the edges of the other boxes as intended. 
Creating a temporary guide at a point of a composite shape or 3D object can cause some ambiguity in determining tangent and perpendicular conditions. For example, if we create a guide at the point between a segment and an arc, should the tangency be on the segment or on the arc? If the cursor is snapping to a segment or curve and the shift and space keys are pressed, guidelines are not generated at the snap point but at the closest end point of the segment or curve. If we place the cursor over the segment away from the end point and hit shift and space keys, a temporary guide is created at the end point of the segment with the magenta guides tangent and perpendicular to the segment. If we place the cursor over the arc, away from the endpoint, and hit shift and space keys, a temporary guide is created at the endpoint of the arc with the magenta guide tangent and perpendicular to the arc. The third type of guide is a permanent guide that is generated by the user with the guide tool. To create a permanent guide, select the guide tool, then click any two points in the modeling window. You can click a blank area or snap to other objects or guides. They are always drawn as black dashed lines. They can be moved and deleted just like an object. Permanent guides are located on the active layer when created. That layer is turned off, then the guides are turned off. In addition, permanent guides are saved with the project and there is no limit to how many permanent guides that can be created. In the previous example, we aligned a box with the edges of two other boxes using temporary guides. Let's do this example again but use permanent guides instead. We begin by creating two boxes that are separated just like we did before. Select the guide tool and click on two endpoints of the bottom segment of the first box and a permanent guide is generated. With the guide tool still active, click on two endpoints at the bottom edge of the other box and another permanent guide is generated. With guide snap on, move the cursor to the intersection of the two guides and observe that the cursor snaps to the intersection. We can now create a box that is aligned with the edges of the other two. You can lock the cursor to a temporary or permanent guide by holding the shift key down. To demonstrate this, create a box. Select the move tool, click on the object, then begin to move the mouse. As you move the object, position the cursor over a snap guide and the cursor snaps to the guide as expected. While the cursor is snapped to the guide, hold the shift key down. You can now move the cursor anywhere you want and the object remains locked along the guide. Observe that the snap position along the guide is perpendicular to the mouse position. A useful example of this technique would be to move an object along an axis and also align it with part of another object. Create two boxes that are separated. Select the move tool, then click on the front corner of the box and start dragging. Move the cursor over the guide to translate along that axis. Now hold the shift key down and move the cursor over the corner point of the other box until it snaps to the point. Observe that the moving object remains locked along the guide. Click to complete the move and both boxes are aligned. This concludes the guide snapping tutorial.